Lil Nas X. <laughs> it sounds so bad. Lil Nas X, Doja Cat, and Cyberpunk 2077. You may be asking, what the hell do all of these have to do with one another? And I'll give you an answer. Mike Diva. Mike Diva is a video director and is mainly known for directing the music video for Panini by Lil Nas X. Look, there's his name right there. Today, I'll be going over Mike Diva and interpreting his works. I'll be going over the medium, form, subject matter, and context to get behind the meaning of what Mike Diva has created here. First off, since I already mentioned it, let's start off with Panini. Medium. This is a music video, so video. Mike said in an episode of VFX Artists React on the YouTube channel Corridor Crew that they had five days in between getting the job and having to shoot the music video, so it was honestly a rushed shoot. Mike Diva and his team made a crap o -matic, which is pretty much a storyboard that you just shoot the most basic possible shots to see if your shots are going to work or not. This is really just a good way to plan with the form of the music video and the placement of things, and I find it cool how the medium can help and influence the form by being so simplistic. Mike said that they were editing the video up to five hours hours of release, which is just also crazy how moldable video is as an art form. Of course, it is easy to bring up the amount of VFX that this video has in it, as Mike Diva has a background as a VFX artist. The subject matter of this is actually mainly inspired by Lil Nas X himself, which isn't all that surprising. When making a music video, you are probably going to be influenced by what the artist originally intended with the song. The song was originally about Panini from the animated show Chowder, which I never knew, but anyways, Panini ended up turning into a fan named Panini that had gone rogue and doesn't want to support Lil Nas X anymore as they are famous. The original intent of the music video was to create an animated video in the style of Chowder. This was Lil Nas X's idea and was scrapped, probably because Mike Diva is a VFX artist and not an animation artist. But I think that the new style of the video is much more effective. Leading into my next point, context. This is a modern music video and it takes inspiration from things like Ghost in a Shell, Tron, and Cyberpunk. The ideas for this video were a collaboration between Mike Diva and Lil Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X made the storyboard in his notes app and sent it to Diva, and they immediately started making the crap o -matic. Um, you can actually see on Twitter the storyboard. This video was released in 2019, and it is set in a time where the world was taken over by Lil Nas X and all these different corporations. Um, with all this said, I believe that the meaning behind the Panini music video was somewhat to comment on the ridiculousness of fans that stop loving an artist just because they pop off or become mainstream. With the holograms of Lil Nas X and all the ways that he just seems to take over the world in this video, it seems like Diva and Nas are commenting on how ridiculous fans react. I would say that the roles of this music video for Mike Diva are social influence and collaboration. The reason that Mike Diva even did this music video is because he thought that it was a big deal for his social gain as a creator, and I believe he also probably got quite a bit of financial gain from this work as well. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If I was asked to make a music video for Lil Nas X's next music video, I would totally have to take advantage of the opportunity. Hit me up, bro. And like I'd mentioned before, this work was also collaborative. Mike Diva collaborated with Lil Nas X on the ideas for the video, and he also had an entire team helping him with camera shots, and they even outsourced a lot of the VFX to another company so that all the deadlines were able to be made, were able to be met. <laughs> I think that the intended function of the music video was to entertain and maybe even revere in a way. I think that it's obvious why I say to entertain, like, it's a music video, duh. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna tip your tap your toes and you're gonna go to the beat and let dopamine go through your brain from the satisfaction of the movements to the beat. Why do I say revere? Well, do y'all remember the statue of the basketball player in front of the airport or whatever it was? I think that in a way that this video is to revere Lil Nas X after he's gone mainstream. He's almost shown as an idol in this universe that is meant to be forcefully pushed on you. And in real life, he's somewhat viewed in the same light. Not saying that's inherent bad, but there's also this one part where Lil Nas X is giant. May I say more? Big. The next video I'd like to talk about is Doja Cat's Get Into It, Yo, which was another music video directed by Mike Diva. By the way, content warning, this video has butts in it. So if you feel like you gotta leave the room because of butts, I totally understand. Butts are scary. Unfortunately, there's not any interviews to go off of for this one besides an Adweek article that I am not paying for. So once again, this is a music 
music video and it uses a lot of VFX, models, actors, screenplays, direction, and green screen. This video released on January 31st, 2022 and contains Doja Cat as the leader of a spaceship going up against aliens to retrieve her cat. Yes, the cat was a paid actor. I went after class to discuss form for the music video, uh, what we watch music videos on, and how the camera is positioned through the video. First off, most music videos you're going to be seeing on your phone, tablet, computer, or hell, even a TV. Why? Because of things like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, social media makes it super easy for these things to be looked up in two minutes. And with these like high production values of your favorite songs, it gets shared around a lot. And for the framing of this one, it's almost robotic. I think it's to emulate the version of Doja Cat that looks like she's in a space prison cell. Most of the video focuses on Doja Cat and has these funny zoom ins. I think that a lot of this might have taken inspiration from Star Trek, but I have never watched Star Trek, so I have no idea. The subject of this video is actually kind of funny because Doja Cat herself said that the main, like the song's main hook was just a throwaway line that was just fun to say. But the rest of the song is about how people don't want to be in COVID anymore, but just want to party instead. Uh, so my best interpretation of the video is that the video is about imprisonment of Doja Cat and her cat, and it's supposed to signify being stuck inside because of COVID. Then Doja Cat wants to take back the cat by twerking and stuff. I don't know how to read this any other way than her just trying to have fun while not going back to COVID. Like maybe the aliens represent COVID and she just wants to take back her life from COVID. That's something that I've always liked about Mike Diva is that he's not afraid to take a serious thing like COVID and make it into some like slapstick funny thing. I think that the context of the video also fits with the COVID idea. Doja Cat herself says that one of the lines was about, about COVID, COVID in an Instagram live stream. Home. For the roles on this one, I want to say expression and psychology, social influence and collaboration. Uh, I feel like Mike Diva was motivated by COVID to just say like, fuck you COVID. Not in like the frat boy style of COVID, but more like a, I wish that COVID didn't happen type of fuck you. The social influence and collaboration is like the exact same as Panini. But for the expression, I think that Mike Diva was just really trying to give the feeling of just wanting to get free from the lockdown and just move on with our lives. And the function of this is also to entertain. Once again, this is a music video. I guess I could bullshit my way to saying Revere again, since Doja Cat is like the main focus of this entire video and she's like all powerful, um, but it's not as prevalent as it is in the Panini music video. Quickly, I'm going to go over the last video, No Save Point by Yankee and the Brave. This was directed by Mike Diva in 2020. The medium is video again, and this one uses the most VFX out of all of them. Form is just another music video on social media. The shots on this one are glitchy looking and robotic. The subject matter for this video is Cyberpunk 2077. It's just a game that was released in 2020 that is like in the future with bad corporations and a lot of neon. Uh, context is that the game was coming out and that they needed a cool way to promote the game. And the meaning behind all of this was just to help promote the game in a fun and interesting way. I've looked at the trailer and it doesn't really have a story to it or just like anything besides the cool visuals. The roles of this work are social influence and collaboration. Again, Mike was paid for this and it was a collaborative piece of work. I would say that the roles of this were to influence and entertain the audience. I say influence because it's a promotional piece to promote the video game and I say entertain because it's a music video it's just meant to entertain. So why did I pick this goober? I've been following him since Panini and he's kind of just been an inspiration to me since then. He also does a lot of sketch comedy directing for SNL and other shows. The way I see my response work is either making a music video with a lot of attempted VFX. I say attempted because I know promises that it's good. Or maybe just a slapstick sketch inspired by his other works. I think the main difference between me and Mike Diva is experience. I think that I just need more experience. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.